In the summer of 1988, I turned 17 years old. On the day of my 17th birthday, the recruiter came to my house and helped my mom sign the paperwork, giving me an emancipation so I could join the Army two weeks later. The summer of 1991, I was sent to Fort Ord um, to be a soldier in the 7th Infantry Division Light. Uh, Hua Light Fighters, um, the, the Air Mobile Light Infantry Division concept was something that suited me very well. Um, I was very much more of a field soldier than a garrison soldier. I really truly enjoyed my time at Fort Ord and I served well and honorably. And I had one incident with one bad soldier that came near to ruining the whole experience for me. I returned to the barracks after a very long field exercise. Uh, we'd been out at a training camp for about six weeks. We came back and we threw the usual the barracks party. I had a number of people in my room and spilling over into my room. We were drinking quite a lot. Um, later on into the evening, I started getting tired and I started shushing people out of my room. Um, I moved, I got out just about everybody. Um, you know, most people will just, you ask them to leave and they'll leave. And one soldier wouldn't go. And he was actually my squad leader. Um, so I didn't, you know, want to be an asshole to him and, you know, find it, get it, get in trouble later for having, you know, said something that I shouldn't have. So, you know, I asked him a number of times to leave and he wouldn't. And I kept trying to tell him to leave. I finally, at one point, I, I climbed into my bunk, which was, it, it was a very, very small room. I mean, I was in E4. I think I probably had, um, if I had to guess it right now, I think it's probably a, maybe at best a 10 by 10 room. Um, and I got over and I climbed into my bed and I pulled the covers over and I said, I'm going to sleep. And somehow he, he acted like that was an invitation to have sex. I yelled at him. I was, you know, appalled. What are you doing this? For? What, what's going on? And this is somebody I'd been serving with for a year. He, he was my buddy. I, I didn't want to get in trouble with him. I didn't want him to get in trouble. I just wanted him to go home and go to sleep. And I got up again to go walk to the door. And before I got to the door, I heard There's a sound that still freaks me out, and it's if you ever hear the sound of a rubber shoe on a very highly polished tile floor, that little squeak, that, that noise always puts me on edge. That noise does for me what bullets and bombs exploding, cars backfiring, dogs barking, what so many of those other things do for other people. and. I just, I heard this squeak of a shoe on the floor and it, he put his hands around my throat from behind. At some point, I, I don't know if I lost consciousness or if I just don't remember hitting the ground. I don't know how I got onto the ground, but the next thing I can, the next thing I can clearly remember is 
he's got his arm and he's he's holding it across across my chest so that I I I can't even barely breathe. He's he's holding himself up on his arm and all I can all I can smell is sickly sweet wild turkey and sweat and I I don't know honestly if I ever yelled no or if I could even yell anything. I can't remember being even really able to breathe because I felt like I couldn't get even a single and <laughs> I could breathe now, but um at some point I tore an abdominal muscle in my side trying to push him off but I at that point I was drunk I couldn't breathe He, he raped me. He got what he wanted. And when he was done, I laid on the floor for a few minutes and my shorts were one leg down around my, my ankle and I, I couldn't move and I couldn't, I couldn't even breathe yet. And when I finally could, I, I did the only thing I could do. I, I, I put my shorts back on and I stood up and I started to run out of the room. And he says, if you tell anybody about this, I'll tell them that you're a dyke, <laughs> you know. If you've ever served in a situation where sexual orientation is more important than sexual assault, you'll understand. And if you haven't, then you'll never understand why I didn't want to throw away my career, why I didn't want to throw away everything I knew. I, I grew up in the Army. I was so young when I went in, it was, it was my life. And when he did that, he took away the joy that I found in serving my country. He took away the pride that I had in being myself. I would say emotionally after the rape, I, I shut down. I, it was really hard for me to trust anybody, especially since the person I thought was my best friend told me it was my fault. Um, you know, if you if you don't trust yourself, if you're questioning your own judgment and blaming yourself for things that aren't indeed your fault, then you, yeah, <laughs> there's not much to do. I, I spent overnight one night in a hospital in Atlanta because I told my best friend that I was thinking about killing myself with a bunch of morphine suppositories that a friend who had had cancer, who had been living with me, had left in my house. So, um, you know, in retrospect, death by morph morphine suppository is um, really a very <laughs> silly, silly way to go. And um, 
it, in truth, it was probably more a plea for help than anything. But it was, it seemed like the easiest and least painful and least messy way I could think of to off myself. And yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no. The, I, morphine suppositories, that's it, pretty much. You know, it's a living fucking nightmare getting raided for military sexual trauma. It is a living nightmare. You have to turn around. You have to detail everything that happened to you. You have to explain why you didn't report it. You have to explain anybody that you would have told. And if they still don't decide that that's enough information, they won't rate you. And if you appeal it, they still won't rate you. And if you appeal it again, they might eventually say, oh, well, hmm, since you have all the symptoms of PTSD, but we can't say you have PTSD, instead, we'll just turn around and we'll say you have an anxiety disorder. Because yeah, yeah, because you're just a little anxious. You might be anxious because you got raped, but you know, that doesn't really matter in, in the VA world, that doesn't matter in the military world. What matters is that we, we've decided what your label is, that's what we're sticking to, and yeah, you can fight it all you want, but that's, that's what you get. The, the system is geared towards attackers and not towards victims. For too long we've blamed ourselves, we've blamed you know, the system, we've blamed people that put us into boxes that they expect us to behave a certain way, people that won't report things for us, people that treat us as if we're the guilty party instead of the victim. You know, for too long all this has gone on and silence is the biggest accomplice. As long as we keep our silence, this continues to happen. And that's why I'm talking. That's why more people are talking.